do you think it's fair to to see conflict is really a uh, constraint to problem solving, which can sometimes, um, oftentimes, can be a, a good uh, a good input. Is it fair to to see conflict as a form of constraints that can be positively applied to a lot of problem solving? process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think there are cases where we have to make software design decisions and product design decisions as a group. And if we don't reach out and get those constraints from all the parties involved, we're going to arrive at a suboptimal conclusion, a suboptimal design when it comes to that particular technical or product design detail. You know, there are cases where you know, uh, we've, we've built things here at one signal where we have to consider um, the impact of a decision as it appears on the infrastructure engineering team as well as on the SDK engineering team. You know, a good example is we want to track adoption events. And so we've built a system to, a telemetry system to collect metrics to help us understand when certain features are adopted. We pipe those into an API. Uh, that API server is owned by the product engineering team, which then passes things through, you know, a system owned by the data engineering team and into a component owned by our infrastructure engineering team that actually stores the data. And if we don't consider that, you know, all the requirements of all those teams that go across that in terms of both maintenance and reliability, um, as well as just costs, right? You know, when it comes to adoption events and storing them, you have to think about cardinality. And so if we don't reach out and say, okay, I'm going to, I would like to start putting in data, but the data design that we have is going to explode your cardinality, which is going to cause a large increase in your storage requirements. You know, that, that might require a kind of decision or, or a kind of constraint on our design process to say, hey, you know, we need to have a little less cardinality here because at the end of the day, what we actually care about, um, you know, our position is we want less cardinality. Our interest is, we need the, the, the storage requirements to be linear in terms of our scale as we add new customers and not super linear. And so as much as we can identify what those underlying interests are and expose those as constraints as opposed to kind of surficial, hey, you know, no extra cardinality kinds of constraints, that, that is the key to, to leveraging constraints and, and collaborating across teams to ensure that all interests are met. I think it's about time we jump into how. And... So in, in thinking about how we can how we can address this maybe in a in a, a way that allows people listening in to to sort of have a problem to deal with to to think about and then as you walk them through a couple principles, tactics, or or a proposed framework to how to address this. Maybe I was wondering, Jordan, so let's talk about how do you resolve a conflict that's taking place? And I was wondering maybe if you could give like a a relatable example or like a quick maybe case study for people to think about. And then we can talk about like the practice or the framework or the process to help people resolve that conflict. Absolutely. You know, if, if you have a conflict that's that's already taken place, um, and especially if you're you're in a management position, chances are you're you're being asked to mediate as a third party, and you know, mediation did not occur between the two individuals or teams without your input. Um, the first thing you have to do is just get them in the same room together, uh, create shared values, create shared meaning. And, and just kind of reestablish, hey, we're all on the same team here. We're all working towards the same goal. We have different concerns within that goal and, and different areas where we focus on. And we may even have different opinions about how to meet those goals. But we need to work together to make that happen. And so setting that kind of ground truth of, hey, we're all in this together. We all have the same kind of objectives in mind is important. The next thing you think about is how do we switch from, you know, how, looking at the conflict in particular, how do we switch from positions to interests, um, right? So how do we take away from, hey, this is what I want, this is what you want, to this is the reason that I have a particular want, and this is the reason that you have a particular want. And if we have clarity together collectively on what those interests are, then we can collaboratively work towards a solution. And ultimately, you want to dig into underlying needs, right? So, so nonviolent communication uh, is a tool that you can use, and we'll, we'll chat about more. Uh, we'll chat more about that in a second. But nonviolent communication gives us a way to dig into people's underlying emotional needs, 
Um, and so that, that is a set of language tools that you can use, a sort of therapy jargon, if you will, to be able to dig in and understand those emotional needs. And so once you have kind of a clear set of constraints, if you will, of, of interests and, and needs, you can collaborate together towards a plan of action and then move towards, you know, relationship repair, right? Um, because ultimately we want people to want to work together collaboratively and things can get really hot and heated um, from time to time. And we want, we want to encourage folks to move past that. I think the the first thing you mentioned about shared values and shared meaning, this is something that I really admire in Jerry is that like anytime we go into a, we need to make a design decision or we need to determine what our path forward is for a certain strategy. Um, Jerry, you're always really good at helping us like set that shared intention and, and shared goal. I know like it's almost like we, we always vi- revisit that and that's something I think is, is really powerful. Jordan, I'm really curious about switching from positions to interests because I can feel, I feel like this may be where a lot of folks get stuck is you come in, you set the context, you set the shared objectives of we want to do this and here's why this is important to all of us. Um, but then helping people move from this is what I believe and I'm attached to that. How do you help people make that switch from their position to interests? You know, essentially, you, you have to dig in, you have to ask them, you know, why, why is it that you feel this way or help me understand, um, you know, let, let's, let's make this a little concrete. Let's assume that we're collaborating together. We've decided as an organization, hey, we have too many programming languages in our code base. We need to cut it down. So we're going to pick one language to use for, you know, um, you know, a, a functional language or something. And so uh, we have Scala, we have F Sharp, we have a few different options kind of already in our code base. And we might have different people who are advocating for different languages. Um, and so we might say, hey, you know, our, our six languages, one of them has to be Scala. And you might say, hey, one of them has to be F Sharp. And there might be a third party that says, we can really only have one functional language because we have six languages and we can't have, you know, two functionals and 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 not not have any kind of other kinds of languages to deal with other kinds of use cases. And so essentially, we need to move from the positions of, hey, Scala, hey, F Sharp, to interest. How do we, you know, what is it exactly that, that wants you to pick F Sharp? And what is it exactly that wants you to pick Scala? And you might find that, frankly, you know, one person may have invested a lot of their career in specializing in Scala. And, and so a natural part of their kind of uh, existential bias, you know, their bias towards existing uh, is to want to perpetuate that in their workplace so that they can continue to be productive in the tools that they enjoy. The same is probably true on the other side. Um, and sometimes as an engineering leader, you have to be in a position where you have to say, okay, well, this environment, this working environment was a very hospitable place that was well aligned with your personal objectives in the past, but moving forward, that may not be true. Um, And so digging in to understand what those interests are helps us have frank conversations about these kinds of things. Uh, And and, uh, really, the only way is to ask why and really dig in. 